Hey everybody, welcome to the Everything Money Show. It's Uncle Paul and Seth. We uh, welcome you into uh, our analysis of companies. Paul, today we are looking at Moderna. Obviously, this is huge in the news. Their vaccine is rolling out. The uh, RNA attack on your cells. Uh, and uh, we did a Pfizer video last week, which uh, completely exploded. But what we really want to do, folks, is not look at the hype behind Pfizer and Moderna. We want to look at the actual math of the company, the financials of the company, to learn, is it a healthy company? And is it something you would invest in, Paul? What are your thoughts on Moderna? So we're going to look at it now, but uh, Moderna doesn't have a ton of revenue, but has a lot of growth lately. So like, here's a chart of Moderna. It just went public in December of 18 or so, around 18 bucks, and it's at 130. So that's why it's probably getting a lot of attention right now, too. It has the, it has the vaccine. It's up 15. No, it's up, what, eight, uh, what's 18, six times, seven times since, mm -hmm. since, uh, Jan since December of 18. So it's a very exciting sexy stock from that perspective now here's where i have an issue mm -hmm. what's the market cap 51 billion okay 51 billion dollars now do you want me to be slow or do you want me to go fast here and show other companies no here is the revenue for the last 12 months go ahead paul 245 million now before we started the video you were you pulled this right up and were shocked by this number yeah, this why is, should i be shocked by this so this is all important relative when you start to learn fundamentals you start to see different Similarities, not different, different similarities. Is that redundant? Is that contradictory? That's good. You have to see different metrics that will, you'll understand. It's just like whenever you become more involved in a certain aspect, for example, if you're a sports expert and you're a basketball expert, you'll be able to tell from looking at somebody bounce a basketball three times, do they have an understanding of the game or not? Just mm -hmm. from the way they dribble. If I dribble like this, like Michael Scott. That is how you dribble. <laughs> if I dribble like this, <laughs> then then you're going to be able to say, okay, Paul's probably not a basketball player. But if I dribble and just immediately go through my legs nonchalantly like this, you're uh -huh. like, oh, okay. That's, sure. Paul understands basketball. He's if probably it, a better player than somebody else, right? If it walks like a duck, sounds like a duck. Right? But you're not going to be able to know exactly how good I am. You're just going to be like, okay, he has an understanding of the game. I'm going to put him in this certain level. Now, I think what most people just look at, Paul, is that trending stock price going up, and uh, they just say we should just buy because it's going in a vertical direction. Isn't that the case, Paul, of course? That's the case for a lot of people, but for – value investors like myself and what we're trying to teach here at the channel, mm -hmm. we're trying to sit there and say, listen, over long periods of time, the fundamentals of the business will drive the stock price. As Warren Buffett says, in the, long, in the short run, a stock is a voting machine. In the long run, it's a weighing machine. What that means is in the short run, it's based on the popularity, mm -hmm. who's voting for it, who's not voting for it, et cetera. In the long run, it's the weight. What's behind the company that drives the stock price and drives the value? Okay. Does that mean that you should not ride this. If you're a trader and you have a certain system of trading, not based on fundamentals, which we have as well, mm -hmm. more power to you. That doesn't care what the company is, what it does. It just cares about the stock price. But if you're an investor, you care about what's behind the company. How are you getting paid a return? No matter what, even if the stock goes up or down, you want to make sure this company is becoming better as a company and its weight is becoming greater. If this, resonates, if this analysis resonates with you, we appreciate an early thumbs up. Paul, go back to that striking feature you said with the market cap of 50, 52 so, bill all the way down to the revenue. The revenue is the sales. So one of the metrics we always look at is price to sales ratio. Price to sales is 192. Okay, 192. PE ratio. No, price to sales price ratio. Price to sales, Paul. So it's the price, market cap of the company divided by sales. Sorry about that. Let's do a quick stock screener. Okay, guys, we found that the top 3,000 companies Right now, this price to sales actually jumped up because the stock's up to 193. The median in the top 3,000 companies was 2.6. So how much greater? That's 70 times greater. 70 times larger than the median company in the top 3,000 companies. Guys, I have a hard time believing that a company that has a $51.6 billion market cap has enough potential in the future to grow into that value. 70 times larger. So. Let's start with the eight pillars. Let's just go to the eight pillars. Pillar number one is PE ratio. We want it less than 20. Well, it's less than 20 because it's negative. <laughs> so it's an X. That's a check then. <laughs> okay. How about profit margin greater than 10%? X, negative 148%. Are they just giving money away, Paul? What are they well, doing? Well, they're spending a lot of money to, to develop their vaccines, develop their drugs, et cetera. Of course they are. Okay. How about revenue growth? Pillar number three. Revenue growth. Now, I'm going to look at quarterly revenue growth because they don't have much history. As you can see, guys, there's big revenue growth here. 
Just look back at the last quarter of last year, 14 million, and this most recent quarter, 158 million. So definite huge revenue growth here. You don't have to look back, even if you go back to the first quarter, well, they actually had some big drops here, but the point is they are growing like crazy because of this vaccine. Pillar number four is profit growth over the past five years. Now guys, if this, let's say I'm profit. Moderna is currently in the Middle East. <laughs> like that's how far away from profit they are. I mean, guys, look at this. They're losing money hand over fist here. Every single quarter, they're just losing tons and tons of money. Does that mean it's bad? No, it just means that you shouldn't pay $52 billion for a company that's losing money like crazy. Just be more cautious. There's still, when you evaluate a company, it's still the present value of all future cash flow. Just because it has negative cash flow now, doesn't mean the future will be negative cash flow. It could still make money and very soon. But the point is, are you willing to pay $50 billion for a company that generates $230 million in revenue and loses? A billion, you know, $500 million a year, that's the hard part. That's where the models come into play. So this is another X here. Pillar number five is number of shares outstanding. We want this number of shares going down, Paul. It is not going down. Oh boy. Just in the last, they started at 300 million just two years ago, three years ago, two and a half years ago. They're now at 395 million. So they've already diluted you by 33, by 50%. This is probably a metric that most people don't ever even- Oh, I never looked at it until the last two years. You, you don't even know you're getting bent over on your stock count. That's the company right then and there just hurting you. Especially a company like Moderna. They're issuing shares to fund those losses because people want their stock so bad. When you keep buying up and building up the stock so much, you're giving them a reason to go issue more shares and dilute you. So not only are you overpaying, you're also helping yourself get diluted. And, by they, the and they know you're overpaying because they're willing to share more off at a higher price. That's exactly it. When they think their stocks are overpriced, they're going to issue more shares because they're like, hey, listen, Take the shares. Why should we take on debt? We can just issue more shares. Yeah, because the dummies will buy it. Somebody will buy it. Pillar number six is current assets. Now, I was one of those dummies, of course, Paul, in the past few years. You're teaching me a lot, of course. Listen, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy a company that's issuing more shares. If they're using the shares to make acquisitions that are good for the business, sure, sure great. But in this situation, I don't think it's the case. Pillar number six is current assets greater than current liabilities. $3.6 in current assets. 1.5 billion in current liabilities and 1.9 in total. So this is a very good one. They have more cash on hand than they have uh, total debt. So this is a very, very good metric. This is the best thing we can find. How about free cash flow growth is pillar number seven. Free I would be very surprised growth. if there's any free cash flow. Right. Quarterly. Oh, wow. They have free. Wow. Go on. Okay. Last quarter, guys. Look at this. This is quarterly. Look at this. They made $873 million in free cash flow just in the quarter. That was their first quarter of free cash flow ever. Look, they didn't even have operating cash flow in any other quarter. So guys, this could be a big turnaround here. Now let's do this. If they can replicate this forever, this is per quarter times four, that's 3.5 billion times, six, times 20, that's 70 billion. Okay. Market Maybe cap, it works. Market cap is 51 billion. This assumes that this quarter, that what they did in the last quarter, will stay as will stay there and and just stay the same. So this is an example. I'm glad we did this company. Go on. Where it's looking very overpriced, but I don't know how they wait a second. How do they have 893 million dollars in free cash flow with only 200 million dollars in in uh, 250 million dollars in revenue? revenue. Hmm. Huh. 158 million in revenue. Yet they had, that's interesting. Why is that? Let's see here. Let's look at these numbers here. Change in payables, okay, oh. What's these billions? Change in working capital and change in other working capital. Hmm. Okay, so I would not assume this is gonna be, this is that gonna be a, um, a metric that's gonna be very sustainable, I don't think. But if you assume that this is continuing on forever, then yeah, the company's probably not selling for a bad number. Yeah. But I have a hard time believing that's gonna happen. It's just gonna be a very tough thing to continue on in the future. Does that mean avoid Moderna? Just keep your eye on Moderna. Let them stabilize. Let them get the more consistent free cash flow. What other drugs do they have besides the COVID vaccine? What else do they have? I don't know. I don't know either. This is part of the qualitative aspect of a company you need to go look at. What are they doing besides this one vaccine that's going very well right now? Pharma drug companies have to have pipelines of things coming in because those only last forever. Those only last for so long. They don't last forever, right? Yeah. COVID's not going to be around forever. And if it is around forever, it might be like the chicken pox where we just all, I mean, when was the last time somebody had a chicken pox? I mean, I think the kids still get it, right? Do your kids get it? Uh, no, they did not actually. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. 
And I have shingles from it. I get shingles too from it. Do you really? Yeah, a couple times in my life it's it's brought it up. Not too bad though. Not not too bad. Some people get it bad. Don't worry about it. I'll um, lick your shingles. If if this if you're drawn to this analysis and you want more, visit our Patreon. The link is below. Patreon.com slash everything money. You'll join uh 80, 80 like minded folks. 84 of our patrons talking to Paul on a day-to-day basis. You'll learn his trades, what he's doing with all of his good dollars. And can I make something else on, comment? Paul. The Patreon is not going to be available forever in the current form. Go on. The current form of the Patreon is we're developing this website and app that will do all of this and show you all of this. Because right now I pay about 5000 a year to get access to this. I want you guys to have it for 20 or $25 a year. A one-click, eight-pillar analysis is what yep. you're saying. And the financials. Mm-hmm. Now... I'm offering it. Patreon has eight, twenty-five, and hundred-hour level tiers. Any tiers, any any tier you're in, you'll get the app and website for free as long as you're a Patreon member. So this is a good investment in yourself and the future. And trust me when I say this: How many messages do we get a day saying, "Can you do the eight pillars for this? Can you do the eight pillars for that?" Everybody wants it. This will not be around forever. So jump on it. That way you can get part of the community. Make sure you guys are smashing like on your way out before you watch your next video. And hopefully it's our video. We appreciate your support. Love you guys. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. <laughs>